Okay, I'm going to try and keep this uh, short and not ramble on too much because Lord knows I can ramble on with the best of them. But uh, this is my first experience with centipede grass. Um, having moved south from the north and uh, Hurricane Florence uh, rolled in shortly after I moved into this area, so that was a great stroke of luck. And what you're seeing here is the result of that flooding. This area of my lawn was underwater for about two and a half weeks, maybe a little bit longer than that. And so all of the grass, or most of the grass, um, uh, died. Some grass did survive, and that grass has been slowly expanding, which centipede grass does have uh, the reputation to do, but I certainly wasn't going to wait for who knows how many years for this surviving patch of grass to expand fully into the areas that uh, were killed off. So what I've done um, is uh, that's the one downside of this property. I like the house, I like the location, but I don't like the busy road with the noisy traffic. It was a compromise that I had to take because my house uh, uh, back in the home state uh, sold and I needed to make a quick decision. This was the best house of the lots that I saw, but as you can see and hear, there was one big detractor. Oh well. Anyway, getting back to the centipede grass. So, um, so all of this area died off. And um, so what I did was I, per I didn't purchase, I rented from Home Depot a power rake, sometimes referred to as a power thatcher. And I went over this area of the lawn uh, to take up all of the dead grass um, and piled it up in a wooded area on my lot. Um, but um, uh, removed as much of it as I could. I didn't get it all, but I got most of it. And then after that, I uh, put down uh, centipede grass seed uh, with Scott's it's, uh, centipede grass and mulch. And um, I did uh, twice the coverage that was recommended on the bag. Um, uh, in order to get as much uh, uh, a coverage in this dead area as possible because even though you may or may not be able to see it, there's a slope to this area uh, of the lawn and that slope kind of goes left to right. And um, uh, my concern was erosion uh, because uh, in this area of the world, when it rains and pours, literally, and especially in the summertime, we can get uh, very strong thunderstorms with massive downpours. And I was worried about both uh, erosion, if I lightly seeded this area, and I was also concerned about um, the seed basically being washed away uh, because of the runoff. Now, what happens back here in this rear lawn is that in those heavy rains, um, the water from upslope gathers and it actually comes down. Um, there's kind of a swale almost here that channels the water into this area. So it's running at a good clip. It's not just that the lawn gets wet, it's that there is water moving from left to right. Um, and because of that, I did not put down any cover when I put uh, this grass seed down, meaning I didn't put down uh, uh, hay or salt hay, they call it, um, or any other type of ground cover, because I figured all that would do is, is serve to get washed away when there was a heavy downpour. And indeed, there was one heavy downpour um, uh, late in the cycle of me putting this uh, grass seed down. Uh, unfortunately, um, the grass seed had had enough time to, I guess, start to grab a foothold and so while I do have a bare spot over there 
towards the edge of the property. That house over there is unoccupied currently. Um, and, um, most of the grass seed appears to have survived intact in, in terms of where I put it. So it's now starting to come up. It's actually been three weeks since I saw the first sprouts and those first sprouts appeared at the on day 11 I believe it was and uh, it's been three weeks since and as you can see the grass is slowly coming up that's another characteristic of centipede grass is that it's a slow growing uh, grass and so um, and so there we have it um, now of course just to complicate life today the local water supply company declared a water emergency because it's been very it's been hot it's but more particularly it's been dry so now they're saying you can't water your lawns anymore um i did give this lawn a, a thorough soaking early this morning um and it's almost completely dry already it's well over 90 degrees now and it's going to get close to 100 it might even pop 100 today which is memorial day um, but uh, but that's kind of it I just wanted to to talk about the fact that I approached this in kind of a non-traditional way in the sense that I didn't put down ground cover because of my concerns over um, uh, these downpours that we get and the fact that the ground cover would just get washed away um, and I did have a little bit I did put a little bit of ground cover down right here which is where the water is being funneled to try and stop that uh, erosion and the ground cover failed it was washed away and interestingly enough most of the seed that I put down in this area was also washed away except for a, a little bit um, and this of course is, since this is kind of a funnel area this is is where the water is flowing strongest so that's not uh, a particularly big surprise. I'm not sure how to solve that problem yet, but I'll, I'll continue to work on that. But it'll have to wait until our water emergency is over with and, uh, and we can go from there. So like I said, over here towards the edge of the property, we do have uh, some areas where the grass has, uh, if you will, mostly not come up, perhaps got washed away. But um, we'll keep working on that uh, until uh, the grass is fully recovered. Uh, and there's <clears throat> a lot more work to do on this lawn. There's bare spots. There's erosion from previous rainstorms that rolled in shortly after the sod was put down. And um, uh, some disease. We've got some evidence of the dryness and the grass turning brown so uh, this is probably going to be a multi-year project to get the lawn the way that I want it um, very very critical of the landscapers who put this uh, sod down initially uh, happy with the house but uh, the landscapers who uh, did this yard the, the, particularly the landscaping piece um, of uh, uh, grading and uh, so forth is uh, leaves a, a lot to be desired um, and that's one of the reasons why this will probably be a multi-year project to restore or not not even to restore but to get the lawn into its proper configuration I'll probably have to do some dressing uh, which I've never done before so that'll be an educational experience and uh, so so that's it um, uh, centipede grass is uh, kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you, and uh, uh, the, the seed is tiny. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't have the seed in front of me. I'll go get some in the garage and show it to you, so I'll, there'll be a uh, short interruption here while I do that. But um, uh, the slow growing, uh, the fact that when it's initially planted if you will the the moisture requirements uh, you have to keep the ground moist at all times which again because I didn't have a ground cover uh, that was a concern that's one of the things that ground cover does is it helps trap moisture in the ground um, at the surface where the seed is give it a chance to germinate uh, because I didn't have that I used that orbit 
sprinkler which is just throws just long enough to get the the um, uh, circumference of this area and um, the uh, uh, I set it up on a timer so that it would turn itself on every two hours and run for 10 minutes to keep the ground moist and apparently that worked because as you can see um, there is quite a bit of grass that's new grass that's coming up and um, we'll we'll continue at it and see how far we get. I guess that's it. Thanks, bye. Okay, turn to the garage uh, so I can show you the centipede grass seed. Um, that's that's the centipede. Uh, that's the grass seed. It's very tiny, uh, little tiny pellets. Little or, or um, um, it's smaller than. Um, sesame seed uh, looks a little bit like miniature sesame seeds and also uh, centipede is not cheap <clears throat> this uh, one pound bag uh, cost me I think between 20 and 30 dollars and the Scott's uh, centipede plus mulch cost me um, uh, around $35 per bag and each bag covered I believe 2,000 square feet the Scots that is <clears throat> and um, I wound up using uh, two bags on that back area that you just saw uh, which was um, that's a 3,000 square foot area so I put an extra thousand square feet if you will of seed back there <clears throat> Um, in order to uh, promote the growth. Um, from what I've read, centipede kind of has a, a three-year life cycle in the sense that you're supposed to put it down, um, I don't know, relatively lightly uh, is my interpretation for the first year. Uh, then it, uh, it will kind of settle in, if you will, between the first year and the second year, and then the third year, it will start to fill in uh, the gaps. That's supposed to be the way that it works. I haven't been here long enough to confirm that that actually is the case. And as I've said, I put down more grass seed uh, than less because I was concerned about things like erosion um, happening in those uh, sloped areas of my property. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, that's it, I guess. Um, uh, as more things happen with this lawn, I'll, uh, uh, um, update as appropriate. Thanks a lot for watching. See you later.